Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I want to uh, begin by acknowledging uh, our relatives from the Lacan, and I want to thank you for welcoming us into your territory. Uh, and I, I appreciate uh, your decision to be with us today, to, to share your love and your strength, uh, and help the work that we're going to do today. So my hands go up to you. I know how important it is to take care of business, and, and, uh, and how powerful it is to know that you're here with us. I, uh, I also want to acknowledge um, Raven and, and Kelly and the Copper Thunderbird uh, to, to sit with us and to hold this space for us as we're speaking and being here together to re remember that uh, they represent all of us, uh, what's inside ourselves. This is our future really in front of us. And, uh, it's the strength of our feminine and the strength of our masculine self and what it means to have a sexual identity and all that uh, that's important. But I also uh, want to acknowledge all of you and thank you for coming and to show your strength here today and, uh, and to stand together. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, my relatives. I, I want to acknowledge Lucy. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, all the women that, uh, in our family that stand with you today and be uh, here. I want to acknowledge Karen, and, uh, the place and the strength that you bring and the work that you do. I, I really appreciate that. So in saying that, uh, with all of you uh, that are here uh, holding the space for us and bearing witness to what we're doing today, is that uh, to let people know that we're being accountable and that we are standing up wanting to change things and wanting to be different in the world. That what we want to do is to be able to, uh, like my brother say, look in the mirror and, and really love what we see. You know? And, uh, and I, I also I want to acknowledge my nephew. I, I'm really proud of you. Proud of my brother and his mentorship. You know, uh, I really see that our family tradition is going to be held in high regard with the work that you do. It's very important. I want you to know that I love you very much. But I also I really love my brother. He's, uh, he's been a good mentor to me as a man. You know, he married my cousin sister many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> And uh, I'm the one way younger than him and white, and he still got his good black hair. <laughs> but it, he, uh, Alex, who you know, uh, and Nelson, uh, has been involved, we'll say, in leading men for many years uh, with the soccer and uh, with community leadership. And, uh, and it, what's important to me is to acknowledge that uh, as young men, uh, he asked us to be great. Uh, you know, and when we would challenge ourselves, like there were times where uh, our soccer teams and players would go out and get drunk and not show up. And, and Alex was always really clear about uh, wanting us to stand really in our own integrity around uh, the sport. You know, you, it's about learning the sport, it's about carrying yourself, and it's about working hard. If we were going to drink, it needed to be when we were finished, right? And, and I think what I, what I get from that, Alex, is that uh, you had an idea about what it meant to be a, a man. You know, you had an idea of what it meant to walk in integrity. And I, I want to thank you for that. And there were times like the waxing and waning of interest for soccer for me, you know, for a few years, is that, um, you know, I began to question whether that's what I wanted to do. And Alex would always be the one to take me out to a field, whether it was out at UVic or some other place, and kick the ball around. And uh, Alex was kind of, every time he would move farther and farther away from me when he was kicking the ball. And I was beginning to think, geez, what's this guy doing? <laughs> and what he was doing is mentoring me to, to push myself and go past the limits I had set for myself. And uh, whether that was conscious or not, that's just what happened. And I really appreciate that. Because what it said to me is that no matter what I do in my life, is that there are limits, there are things that... Uh, prevent me from seeing the greater part of who I am in the world and, uh, and to recognize those limits and to move past them. And that's a really powerful thing. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what, are the, what is a touchstone? Like what are the things that, that anchor me into wanting to be a better man? Uh, to want to be a better citizen and uh, wanting to be a better father and a better husband. And, uh, and I really go back to uh, you know, to some of the old stories that our people lived by, you know. And we have, a, we have an important story, uh, and it's called Born to be the Son. And uh, please look it up. And, uh, and this story is not complicated, it's very simple, but it's really powerful and meaningful to me. 
and it simply says of Hadawa, who lived not far uh, from here. And uh, Hadawa was uh, weaving a basket, and some say she was weaving a mat, but she was weaving. And she was singing a song. And the smoke in the house took that song right up to uh, out the roof, and it touched the whole world. And that, at that moment, the sun was walking by and heard this beautiful song. And then the ray of light came down and enveloped her. And then, coming to know one another, uh, they were married. And uh, soon after, she became pregnant, and soon after, gave birth to her son. And he became known as the priest like Allah, born to be the son. And as born to be the son uh, was uh, loved by that family, uh, it, it, it moved uh, this uh, young being, an young person, into a curiosity about the house and the world. And uh, Adaba supported that curiosity, uh, ever growing and encouraging that uh, to very son to learn about the world. And uh, he learned about his family in that house, and he learned about the parameters of the house. And then he wanted to go out and play down the beach. And he now was exposed to playing with other children in the village. And they were discovering the beach. And Otter, uh, Otter uh, was a real prankster. And Otter would tease everybody, kind of almost in a bullying kind of way. And so what happened is that uh, Lisa Aguila says to Otter, Otter, why are you doing that? Why do you always go and tease these people? You know, and uh, Otter looked at him and said, who are you to question me? Who are you to question me who doesn't even have a father? But he'd never heard that kind of energy or tone before. And it really hurt him. So he went back to his mother and he said that. This is what happened. And she gave him a nice big hug and she says, don't you worry about that Otter. He just hasn't been trained well. And, uh, and then she sat him down and told him the story of uh, the journey of the weaving and, and the, who his father was. And uh, he felt very comforted in his heart about that. And never again did Lisa Aguila question who his father was. He was teased, but never again was he questioned. Never again did he lose that sense of himself. And then one day he says to his mother, I want to go and see my father. And she knew it, that that day was going to come. And so she went and she, uh, she made a bow, and she did made a bowstring in some arrows. <coughs> she told him to shoot toward the morning star. And he had to be very careful about it, very clear. And soon, uh, it was a ladder. And this ladder went from that world to this world. And then, let's say, she shook it to make sure that that ladder was really solid. And then he was able to climb up that ladder. And when he got up to there, he could saw a village just like this one that he lived in. And he could see that at the center of that village, there was a sun crust on it. So he knew that it was his father. So he went over to it. <coughs> And they were very happy to see him from that house. And said, you have come now. Your name, please, like you love, means that you are now going to carry the sun and you're going to wear abalone earrings to the universe. That's why you were born to be the sun. And so then, uh, please, like you love, put the mask on and put the earrings and walked through the universe. And radiating light and radiating color. And some say he wasn't a very big man, uh, but he was a, a radiant man, illuminating. And then at a certain point, uh, he longed for the earth. And in that longing, he stopped and he'd look around. And uh, when he stopped, uh, the treetops started to burn. And when he went too fast, because uh, he's out of balance now, uh, things started to freeze and water, and all kinds of changes to the universe. And so the father took his mask and took the abalone shells back and sent them back to the earth. Because that's where his heart was. And he say he came down and he landed in the water. And it was just then there were four women who were uh, going out clam digging. And they saw him in the water and said, hey, look, that's me, I guess a chief. So they pulled him into the canoe and they brought him home. And the next series of Place Like the Other Stories started. <laughs> but, what he, but the important part of that story for me is that it's a foundation story for our people, where we come from. This foundation story has themes in it, has elements that teach us about what it is to be a man what it is to, to grow into. Uh, for instance, can you imagine lifelong knowing and never questioning that there were a world below and a world above, that it's only separated by arrows? <coughs> to know what say that when you got hurt, that uh, your mother or your auntie or your grandmother wrapped you in her arms to, to keep you close to your heart, that you can have that place of, of healing your wound in a beautiful way. 
you know, not shaming you about turning, uh, this way or that way, right? So that you can be true to your compassion and true to your empathy and true to that vulnerability. And that to me it's the only way as men in the modern times can we actually say that uh, we can be warriors. If we're not attached to our heart, we become a savage man. But if we're attached to our heart, we are the wild man. And there's a distinct difference. The wild man uh, is about masculine sexuality, it's about living in harmony with nature, it's about honoring what it is to have that energy flow through your body that is, is, is a mirror of what the Creator is about for us. Uh, because as the Creator creates things, so do we. You know, as, as our feminine side is the receptacle for all that is created, uh, so do we. It's a powerful piece for us to know about. So that when we are walking in this way, those stories, those touchstone stories from we get from our culture, allow us to grow into who we are supposed to be. Because when I think about it, is that can you imagine, we'll say, lifelong growing up, knowing that, uh, that I'm going to wear a sun mask, that I'm going to wear abalone earrings, that is my job as a man to illuminate uh, and to give color, never ever questioning uh, that, you know, to know or say that uh, that is an important gift that I bring to the world. What an amazing thing to know that. You know, and I think about how our ancestors structured those kind of teachings. You know, like the song that uh, my nephew sang and his dad and we welcomed others to come sing with us. You know, that is a Grease Trail song. It's a song that celebrates uh, the journey that we're going over a mountain. Uh, but it's about building relationship with the people on the other side of that. It is about knowing that as we are walking in this pathway, that we are learning not only about the path and the essence of that space, uh, but we're learning about each other in it. When I went with uh, my cousin's sister, Nella, uh, we were a group, there were two distinct groups, one went one way and we went the other. And I tell you, it was probably about six months after I had a massive heart attack. Uh, and, and my heart and that heart attack had stopped, that was dead. You know, and uh, and they gave me this shot in which broke a blood clot and I came back to life and I went, holy smokes. You know, and so from that day on, I made a commitment to live. You know, I made a commitment to experience the world in a way that was really powerful. Uh, I always thought it was before, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but it would, to me, uh, when we were journeying that, and we, we, it was a tough go, it was, our ancestors are tough. You know, he had to draw on his strength to bring you up this mountain. And just when we were kind of losing focus and faith, and you know, we are just going like, wow, this is intense. Uh, we came to a clearing on top of the mountain, perfect circle. And there was ferns there. And the light was coming down on it. And right in the middle of that circle was a white uh, uh, albino fern. Right in the middle. And we realized that that was a very special moment. That was, a, that was a gift from the Creator to us. To say that at the center of everything that we do is a really magical thing. Right? And, uh, and I think that's a real powerful piece. So we end up having stories as templates that guide us, but we also create new stories and new experiences to help us. And I think that's really a wonderful thing. I have all the hope in the world that, uh, that we are going to change the world by the very fact that we love one another, the very fact that we learn to be in our heart, right? and the very fact that we are warriors that are willing to take the risk to walk into unknown territory in today's society uh, to be uh, the best that we can be, to sing our songs, to express our love, uh, to be with our wives, our children, powerful things. You know, and so I want Raven to know, and I want Kelly to know uh, that uh, they're loved and they're really appreciated and admired for the courage that they're showing. Because if they were inside me, right, if this is me, what you're seeing, I'm very proud. The dignity that, uh, that Raven has shown, you know, and the strength that Kelly has shown, as a young man willing to do things to grow into his voice, 
and for her to bear witness to it that she as a raven is going to liberate that land. You know, she's silent today. She's not going to be tomorrow. It's her turn tomorrow. You know, and uh, she's going to be the story keeper about how we are conducting ourselves. Right? Very important thing. And so I, I feel good about that. So that, I wanted to share that. And uh, I wanted to thank my brother Paul for, uh, for inviting me to come and to speak and to, to be a part of this. This is a very powerful time. This is life changing time for us. And, uh, and I want our women to know and we'll say that as you go home and you talk to others, that this group here uh, has made a commitment. You know, they made a commitment, and each time we come together, it's about deepening that knowledge and that wisdom and that commitment. That we're digging down to look at the core of who we are as, as, as men. And in that, uh, if there's things within that place that don't belong, we're going to be like surgeons and remove that. So that the only thing left is love. Right? The only thing left is love. So those touchstone stories, let's reauthor the scripts in which we were taught. Let's, let's not uh, 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 you know, carry the thing that don't belong to us anymore. Because someone uh, in their pain and in their hurt had an idea about women or an idea about family or an idea about what it is to be a man that we were recruited to, right? So all the jokes and all the things that we may have done as teenage or young men, uh, that was the recruitment. Uh, that's not the truth. And so we can reauthor that. We can change that story. And in our, we can have new stories. And, uh, and, um, and this is about that today for me. And I uh, really thank you. We ship, we prepare this breath and this spirit in a really good way and live our stories. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Brother Gaelic Hesley. Um, if you try to think about how how they talked before the first visitor came to our shores, how our people talk before contact. I can imagine that that's how our people talk. And so what a, what a gift and a privilege to bring our minds into that place. That's our way back, right? That's a, how you talk is like, a, um, every time I hear uh, the, the gift of, of the words that you share, it takes me, it feeds my spirit for a long time. It takes me a long time to, to ingest and digest and so it's uh, a gift that just feeds me for a long time. And um, so I want to thank you with Eddie for your words and um, for accepting our invitation. <laughs>